Let us take a look at one equation in math. A equals 10, B equals 20, C equals A plus B. What's the value of C? Did you say 30? Okay, well done. You really deserve a standing ovation. Now one more question for you in computer language. Did you get anything? You probably wouldn't. I just asked you if A equals 5 and B equals 5 and C equals A plus B what is the value of C? The answer is 10. You may find it impossible to read and understand but it's very easy for a computer to understand and it's mere impossible for a human to remember and code hundreds of combinations of zeros and ones just to write a small tiny piece of program. So we need to solve this problem and eliminate the trouble to write a program in pure computer language. Now how about introducing a translator between you and the computer so that you write your code like this and the translator will translate it for computer to this. And the translator in programming world we call it compiler. So the compiler takes the input of a source file which has your source code in high level language and it will generate an object file which has numericals and characters in special in some weird sequence. For us object file may look weird but it makes perfect sense for a computer and as we know computer processors understand only zeros and ones. You need to have a C compiler to compile a C program. You need to have a C++ compiler to compile a C++ program. Similarly we need Java compiler to compile a Java program or Java source file. Let's take an example Let's say you wrote the following program in a file and you saved it. Let's call it a source file as it has the source code in it. In this program we want to display the result of x plus y on your computer screen. Now this code has few bugs in it. The compiler will start the scanning and translate the source code to machine code from first instruction which is x equals 10. And then it goes to line number 2 which is y equals 20. And then it reads a display z. The letter Z comes as a surprise for the compiler because until this point it read variable X and variable Y and know nothing about Z as the compiler did not read the line number 4 yet where value of Z is calculated. So compiler takes a note of this line number 3 and then it continues from line number 4. At line number 5 we have another bug. We are trying to display something that is not previously defined compiler takes a note of this bug as well and moves on and continues with line number six. Now if you compile this program you don't get the output you're expecting. Instead you will see a message saying there are two bugs in your code please fix them before you before you compile once again. So the programmer will fix the bug by removing line number three and five as they are not of any use anyways and he compiles the program once again. Now your computer will run it and show the output you're expecting. It will be 30 and will be displayed on your screen. So the compiler translates your source code in one go and notifies all the errors it finds in the end. Once the compiler certifies your code that it does not have any bugs in it, your computer will go ahead and run the program and display the output as 30. Okay, good. Now let's see how the same thing is done in case of interpreter. Let us take the same code. Unlike compiler where the program is compiled in one go and run in one go, interpreter translates the code line by line. Let me explain you what I mean. The first line says the value of x equals 10. Now the interpreter translates it to machine language and then machine will run it the very moment the interpreter translates it. The machine will not wait for the entire program to be translated. Each line will be run by machine the moment it is translated. So now line 1 is translated and is run by machine. Line 2 is translated and is run by machine. When it comes to line number 3, just as compiler got surprised of letter Z, interpreter to get surprised and reports the error immediately 
and it won't further process the lines. So this time it asks the programmer to fix the bug. Only then will it ever go to line number 4. Since this course is about Java, let's talk a little bit about Java compiler. In case of C language or any platform dependent language, the compiler would convert the source code directly to machine code that the computer processors can understand. But in case of Java, the compiler will convert the source code to an intermediate code that the Java virtual machine can understand. And JVM further uses some tools and utilities to convert the intermediate code to machine code that the native computer processor can understand and run. So you write your source code, it will then be compiled using Java compiler. This will generate an intermediate code that neither computer nor you can understand, but only a Java virtual machine can understand. You may wonder why we need to have intermediate code. I will answer it later. So until now, interpreter did not come to picture. Now let's say compiler did not find any bugs in your code. A utility called loader will load the intermediate code which is compiled to the Java virtual machine. Now the file is ready for interpreter to take. The interpreter will then read the first line, translate it to machine code and then your computer will run it. Now it reads the second line, translate it to machine code and then your computer will run it. It keeps on running till the end of the file or first occurrence of error. We'll understand more about interpreter when we cover the concepts of runtime errors or exceptions. In some languages, the source code in high level language will be interpreted, not compiled. In case of Java, interpreter will not handle the source file, but it will handle the compiled code or intermediate code. Just in time compiler. Now you will better understand what just-in-time compiler is. Let's have a small program. Here as you can see that we are having five statements or five lines of code out of which three of them are redundant. The statement display z is written three times. The compiler will compile the code and generate intermediate code. Let's assume this is the intermediate code. Now when we run the program the interpreter translates line by line and your computer runs them as and when it gets translated. But one interesting thing about this is that the computer will have to wait every time the interpreter translates each line. Whereas in case of compiler there is no wait time as the computer will get the fully translated file in one go. In this scenario although we cannot nullify the wait time at least we can reduce some impact using technique called just-in-time compilation. The compiled code or intermediate code will go through the just-in-time compiler so that it will further optimize it. In this case, line 4, 5, 6 are redundant and just-in-time compiler will mark this code as redundant. So when the file gets interpreted, the interpreter will now know that the code in line number 4 is going to come again. So it stores the machine code of line number 4 somewhere in the computer memory. And whenever it comes across with the same piece of code again, it will simply tell the computer to run machine code directly without translating. So there is no retranslation of same code again. This phenomenon is called just-in-time compilation. And this will significantly improve the performance. In reality, just-in-time compiler and interpreter will go hand in hand in Java and use even more optimizing techniques to increase the performance. So just remember, both just-in-time compiler and interpreter will come into picture only when you run the program. Now I hope I made myself clear in explaining what compiler is, what interpreter is, what just-in-time compiler is. If you're still unclear about any of this, don't panic, it's very normal for beginners. Just try to view the video once again. If you still don't get it in second time, no need to worry again. Just move on to my next videos and revisit this video later.